What is going on guys? Welcome back to another update on the reef tank. Uh, we got a couple new uh, things going on with the reef tank, so I want to kind of give you guys an update on what's going on. Uh, we do have some good growth on the coral, so I'm excited to share um, some of that status update as well. All right, so let's start off with some of the growth in the corals. So there was a lot of things going on with the tank. Um, initially, when I set it up, we had a lot of parameter swings. We had a lot of just, you know, random things that weren't reading correctly. So I had made some assumptions where I was just like, oh, you know, nutrients wasn't here. We got to dose this. So now things are starting to balance out. And as you can see, the Montes are starting to grow back. So like, so these three Montes here, so we got this one here that's starting to get his color back. It was completely bleach, completely white. Same thing with this one over here, but there's a couple polyps on top that are starting to come back. This one over here is super bleached, but I think there's like one or two polyps on there. And I think that we can probably save that one. Um, and it's probably gonna take a little bit longer, but I'm really excited because like, for example, this guy here, completely bleach no color no nothing and finally it's starting to come back because the parameters are starting to be stable and things are looking good for some of these corals same thing with some of the mushrooms i've noticed like you know in a, maybe like a couple months in the mushrooms started retracting and now as you can see the mushrooms are fully open looking happy so i'm super excited that the mushrooms are going to survive this because you know to be honest like the mushrooms are like the easiest things to grow and if you can't grow them in this tank or your tank there's something wrong with your tank now we're just moving left to right in the tank here so so this is the green star polyp like little island i had going on a lot of algae on the little island but also if you notice the green star polyp is just completely gone and the last update i was trying to figure out what was going on and i finally figure out what is causing the green star polyp to kind of retract fully and kind of disappear and that is because of my regal angelfish. My regal angelfish is actually going around and just biting off the polyps and eating them, just straight up eating them. So I haven't really seen my angelfish attack anything and long behold, it loves green star polyps. So I probably cannot keep green star polyps in this tank at all. I can probably end up putting it to the sump, but then if I put it to the sump, it's probably going to take over the sump. Going to kind of leave it here you know, hopefully he or she kind of like phases out where it just doesn't eat everything and it bounces back. But for the most part, I think that the green star polyps are no go in this tank. All right, the green slimer is looking good. We still got color in it. <laughs> it's been three weeks since I've had the green slimer. Uh, the polyp extension is kind of just, uh, I don't know how extended the polyps are supposed to be for the green slimer, to be honest. Uh, I see the polyps, but I don't see like a crazy extension on it. So I would say it's just like a low extension <laughs> um, it could be just be too much turbulence um, in the flow or it just doesn't like some of my parameters because my parameters right now aren't perfect but they're stable now here's another coral that's coming back um, I forget exactly which one this is I'll probably put the name in here um, once I find out what this one was called but completely bleach completely gone and as you can see we're starting to have color it's starting to come back and hopefully we, uh, we get some, some nice bounce back from this. Here are some more corals that kind of just moved around. There's a Monty over here. So this Monty was doing pretty decently uh, until we had like a elk swing and then it bleached like half of it. So the bottom half of this was completely bleached but slowly starting to come back. So that's, that's a good sign. This one was always doing good um, but now it's coloring up a little bit better. This one was completely bleached but we're starting to get some sort of red color back. So I think that could be saved. So this digi is actually showing growth. Uh, I'm super excited because if you look at the top tips, it's starting to be a little bit white. It's starting to, to expand out from where it is. The colors are starting to be more vivid. The red is more vivid. The green is more vivid. I'm just really, really excited that this guy survived like through the craziest swing in this tank. All the other corals in here basically like took a hit, like a, a crazy hit, except for like this guy and probably like the mushrooms were like the only ones that didn't take in the hit. Um, and obviously the, the NEMS too, but the NEMS were a different story. They took a hit from a different <laughs> issue where like the, the tank was too hot on the outside in the garage um, and they came in here and they're just like trying to recover. But this guy went through all the swings in this tank and still managed to, to grow. So that's crazy. So here's the NEM Island. Um, got some movement on the NEMS. NEMS are kind of moving all over the place. 
I'll show you kind of like the spots that they're choosing to, to kind of <laughs> move around and hopefully they'll stay or just find a different spot. I did also move another rock piece right there. That was um, this whole giant rock here in the back was from the sump. I just moved it up because it had like three or four NEMs attached to it. Wanted to see the NEMs can improve in color a little bit better with a little bit more light up here. So we'll see what happens with these guys. Obviously there's still bleach, um, but I am hopeful that they will bounce back and recover. All right, so this guy right here was over here, but then uh, during maintenance, I would just kind of knock it off occasionally because it's kind of was pointed on an angle and the way it's angled, it just kind of gets in the way. So it got knocked off and then I just re-glued it straight over here. So initially when I got it, it was kind of more a red color and now we're starting to see green grown in here. So that's kind of interesting because when I bought this acro, it was just a mystery acro. They or just guessed that it could be a PC rainbow. I don't know if it's gonna be a PC rainbow or not because yeah, I guess it could be with the greens in it, but I'm not sure. It's like a mix, <laughs> a mix like green and a mix maybe some red. Um, it could be a PC rainbow or it could be just completely something else, but it's a mystery uh, acro. I'm excited to see what kind of colors it has, but it's starting to turn green. So that's kind of cool. The acro that's across from here was a bleach one. And I was trying to see if some of the polyps were alive, it will bounce back. But I don't think that one's gonna be savable. Same thing with the ones that are on the rack here. Um, they all bleach. I don't see any polyps because I was trying to see if there was like one or two polyps on the SPS and then we can try to save it. But I think they're just too far gone um, to save. So at least we tried, but I'm gonna keep them in here probably another month to see if there's any potential life because I know the SPS uh, takes some time to settle in, takes some time to potentially bounce back because even with these Montes, Montes were literally just white and they, they came back. So uh, cross my fingers, we'll see if we can get some, some life in these guys. All right, so here is the GSP and this GSP has been really stripped down to nothing <laughs> because of that Regal Angelfish. This Regal Angelfish is, is coming by right here. Um, and whew, I just saw it chomp on this thing like you know once or twice throughout the day and it's just whew, it's pretty brutal on the far right we have a couple more montes this monte is starting to come back in color it's kind of hard to see because it's blue but this half over here is starting to have color this guy is another monte but i do not see any polyps on here but we'll see if you know things might bounce back but for sure at least this one will come back you can see here there's a nem I decided to move and get stuck between this rock so it's going to probably just be stuck in there forever i don't think it's going to move from there to be honest all right so the last coral that's way in the back there as you can see the green side has way more new growth all those like white tips on the top there on the green side looking looking really good and also on the bottom left there a the little nub where it kind of got fragged off from the shop there it's starting to grow um some new growth so I'm super excited. The red side a little bit on the far right. The bottom ones not, not so much, but the top ones, look at those growth. It's coming out, man. I am excited to see how that thing grows. And a quick update on the fish. The fish seems like, you know, they're still fighting the butterflies. I don't know why they pick on the little butterflies. The butterflies are really cool. All the fish decides to pick on them. Don't know why. Um, the other fish are looking pretty happy. The only guys that I am worried about are the gobies all the gobies so the diamond goby it's not really on the floor anymore it's kind of scared and it's up on the top over here and the behind the basket it is up here by itself it's just chilling here it'll sometimes go on the floor at night but most of the time it's just up here I don't know like if the tang or something is like harassing them and it's just scaring them where it's just up here but he's just up there. And the other two uh, yellow Watchman gobies, I had to remove them and put them in the quarantine tank because they were starting to develop some sort of bacterial infection on their bite marks because I was pointing it out for a couple of weeks. I was like, oh, it looks like, you know, something's biting them and it's just kind of getting rash. Um, that turned into some sort of infection. So I removed both of those guys, put them in the quarantine uh, tank with the other fish that are in quarantine right now. So they'll probably go through another you know, the full quarantine round, just because since they're combined with the other quarantine fish um, for another month and a half to recover from the bacteria. And then plus they're going through the normal quarantine phase because the fish are in there and I don't want to, you know, recontaminate uh, this tank with, you know, a half process 
of quarantine, so they'll, they'll be gone there. And hopefully they do make a full recovery um, from the bacterial infection. Um, and then we can put them back in. But I think, again, the tangs or something are just harassing them. And, you know, those guys are just kind of just like chilling on the floor. They haven't really made like a, a cave. They haven't dug anything. I was, I was surprised because normally they just dig something and just go under there and just chill. But they didn't really do anything. So maybe what I'll do is when I put them back in, I'll dig a hole for them or something like that. And just hopefully they'll go into those holes, those areas and just chill there because they were just, I don't know, they're just getting beat up. So that's the update on the fish. Um, I want to show you guys the sump because I did move uh, some things around. I do plan on changing the sump a little bit more. Uh, there is some new macroalgae uh, in this basket and that basket as well. That basket is going to be mainly dragon's breath, but I have another uh, new seaweed type. Uh, it's like a red seaweed. It's like a yellow red seaweed type um, of macroalgae that's in that one and in this one because I wanted to see if it grows better up on these baskets or in the sump. And so in the sump here, you'll see. You move these guys out of the way. That's those two red ones are the new macroalgae that I got. When it came in, it was more of like a yellow seaweed type of macroalgae. And now it's turned more red. Same thing on this side. So they're different lights. We have Kessels here. We have Rayon. This is the Gen 6, and the top ones are Gen 4s. I want to see you know which one's growing better. Obviously, the Radeon ones are going to be pretty similar so pretty red here the castle i'm surprised is pretty good too it's it's doing pretty decent um and we removed that big rock that was in here that's up there now um just to kind of have some more room here and eventually um what i want to do is we'll remove this guy here and then we'll have you know more room for the fish to kind of swim around i think that's what uh, the plan is going to be, uh, or I just might keep it. Uh, I'm not sure 100%, but I think I want to just because um, every time I, you know, pull the plug or whatever, the water level always comes up to, you know, pretty high. And I want to have it a little bit lower so I have a redundancy just in case if we have an accidentally, you know, extra water pumped into here, we'll have, you know, some space to hold the water. If we can remove this, the water line will drop. Obviously, it will only go maybe up to here ish um and you'll have you know a little bit more room to absorb some of that water if if something happens um so yeah probably down the road we'll, we'll probably do something there but in today's video i want to focus on the exciting thing that i saw a couple days ago look at this this is all baby shrimp I think these are the uh, cleaner shrimps that are just all hanging on the corner here. Look at this. This is crazy. There's so many of them. Yeah, so the other night I was trying to get some footage, kind of in between the rocks and whatnot. And this one, for sure, they're just hanging out in the side over here. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Well, hopefully, they get big enough. Because if they do get big enough, um, I honestly don't know where I'm going to house them for them to be safe. I might need to pull out the uh, that little box thing again and put them over here in the box. But even then, they're going to get through them. Look at this. Look. Is he trying to eat them? Get up out of there. Push them out of the way. This is so crazy. There's so many of them in this corner too. I think we found like a little, nice little spot here. All right, so I grabbed as much as I could in terms of shrimp. Yeah, I'm not going to see this, but there you go. I grabbed as many as I could, a handful of them, maybe a dozen or so, in that corner. And I think the best survival chance for them is going to be in this sump area here. Um, so we're going to pull them all in here. And we're just going to let them chill in this area. And hopefully, they'll grow into a decent size. And then we'll wait until transfer through here. And then hopefully into the main tank. Also, we have a new chalice. So, um, in my local, like, kind of forums um, area, they have, like, grow out contests. So, like, this quarter or this, this time around, it was... Um, getting a chalice and seeing how fast or how big and 
basically how fast you can grow it in three months. So that's kind of like the challenge. You can get a discounted rate for the little frags and you know, whatnot. So I'm going to be <laughs> trying to out, you know, trying to grow this chalice. It's actually my first time um, attempting a chalice, even though I did have a chalice up there and it got completely Demolish from the the swings of the tank and then also the um, The angelfish likes chalices too. So they took a nip out of the the middle eye and So I ended up having to put it down because I had it up top initially And I was like, okay, so it likes GSP and it likes chalices So those are the two things that the angelfish will take a bite at at least my angelfish I know that they'll take Zoa. They'll take a lot of other stuff too, but um, But yeah, so we'll see how those grow. We have three months to try to grow this guy out um, and hopefully it does well. well we'll see all right so let's do a quick uh side view check for the ozone so ozone is doing pretty decent we still have a little tint um in the tank and actually ozone has been off for a while now because i have it set to a certain opr once it hits like almost 400 opr it turns off it doesn't run um, ozone at all anymore and it's been above like 400 more recently for a while so um had to basically shut that off and we haven't been running ozone it's just been just sterilized this tank's just been sterilized if you aren't subscribed yet make sure you're subscribed like always yeah. listen guys peace